you so much, Scott. We appreciate your talents. Along with David Bavay joining us together to create music. We're excited today to share with you some fabulous news about the very power and presence of God unfolding and taking us to an even higher level than ever before. You know, our ministry theme for this year has been what? Living in expectancy, right? Expecting all kinds of amazing things to ever unfold in our journey of our life. And then all of a sudden we're in the midst of a pandemic. And we think, wait a minute, we were expecting amazing things and then look where we are. We're having challenges with social distancing, a congregation that's now spread out and having difficulty coming together and finding this wonderful sense of community. And we're saying, wait a minute, I thought we were expecting amazing things. Well, we are. And let me tell you, the universe never lets us down. With the very power of expectation within our hearts and our lives, we never have to worry because we know at all times that the universe is responding to the very desires of our heart. We know this throughout the word of God, ever emphasizing that God is in generous spirit, ready to meet the very desires, the very uh, requests, not withholding anything, but in the spirit of generosity, always desiring our prosperity. In fact, Jeremiah says the, that God has plans, intentions for us to prosper. So it's really exciting to share this news with you. That within the midst of this pandemic, there have been various different programs offered to churches to help us continue to do the work that we're doing. Though we're facing challenges and of course within our own spiritual community, uh, the spiritual center here has uh, been closed to lots of events and it's been closed to lots of the work that's being done seven days a week. We were accustomed to seeing almost a thousand people come through our doors each week and then to find 10 or 15 and to come to the building and find hallways dark, no one here, the energy of the life force, of all the enthusiasm of ministries going on seven days a week, sort of gone. Well, we began to just believe that great things are unfolding even in the midst of this. Well, let me tell you, we're excited to share with you that we have had the opportunity to have one of these wonderful business loans uh, that the government has been offering. So we applied back in March and then we all of a sudden heard the good news hey, uh, you're actually uh, being considered for this. And so we were thrilled with that news to help us uh, throughout this time of financial challenge. And so we began to just believe that, you know, the spirit knew exactly what our needs would be. So they responded back and the government says, you know, hey, we've got an opportunity for you to have a loan. And it started out around $15,000. We thought, wow, we could do some amazing things with $15,000. And in this beautiful thing about this was that you have a whole year before the first payment is even due. And then the interest rate is only 2.75. Well, that's really good. And along with it, you have 30 years to pay that back. Wow. Well, let's look into this. So the board of directors began to look into this and examine and see how this might unfold all kinds of opportunities for ministry advancement. We're excited to share with you today that when it came out, the government approved us for $142,600. Wow. At that interest rate, at 30 years to pay it back, at 12 months with no payments, amazing. So we're looking into exciting things for growing and expanding this ministry, taking it beyond. We've got all kinds of ideas that are going. Our creativity is going wild to say, how can we reach out to even more people with this good news that we have to share here at City of Light? How can this ministry grow during this time of a pandemic? How can we invest this money to make more money? In other words, uh, to help underwrite the expenses of the ever-growing and expanding vision that we have for City of Light. You see, we're thrilled to say that this is not a time of shutdown. This is a time of opening up even greater than ever before. This is a time of expansion, and that's the way we see it here at City of Light. So we're looking for exciting ways. We're dreaming dreams of how we can reach out with even more through uh, live streaming programs, through YouTube, for uh, creating possibly our own internet TV station and radio station here at City of Light. The dreams are going 
out the window, shall we say, off, off the chain. We're just dreaming and dreaming of the possibilities as we look for the opportunity that this has afforded us. We're excited to share that as we prayed about this, we imagined. Of course, we thought, you know, knowing who we are as a congregation, maybe they're not going to be so open to allowing us to have this and saying, you know, we'll, we'll put some restrictions on it. We're going to say, uh, maybe not all of that is available, but in the spirit of imagining, in the spirit of visioning, the pure imagination as Scott played, we began to dream and visualize and see, you know, the right and perfect amount that is there for us. And we received the good news just uh, the other day that they have approved us for this amount. And we're just finalizing all the paperwork to know that we can now have these funds that will enable us to expand and grow our programming. We're excited. We'll be sharing more and more of the ideas of what all is unfolding for us through City of Lights new and exciting outreach programs as the future unfolds in exciting ways for us. Well, this morning, let's just center our hearts as we know that God is something incredible for us because already we've shared some great news. Well, what else is the Spirit of God unfolding for you today? Well, in this moment, God has something very special. So just take a moment right now and just pause. Let's remove all other thoughts that may be distracting us and just take this moment right now to center our hearts for the Spirit wants to speak to us in a very special way in this moment. Amen. There was a family that was gathering together and the grandparents were sitting around watching the children play and everybody was having a great time and the grandparents began to brag about their grandchildren as grandparents do. Citing their family history and their excellent DNA, talking about the good stock from which their children have come from. They began to say, well, look at my sweet little grandchild, little Alan. He is made up of good genes and good stock. He comes from a long line of successful people. His family are strong and he's strong too. He's made of good strength and determination. Just look at what he's made of. Another grandparent said, oh, look at my little Brianna. She comes from a family of good character, great values, strong, healthy bones, tall in stature, bright eyes. Just look what she's made of. Well, today I wanna to ask you, what are you made of? Have you ever stopped to think, what am I made of? What's within me? What constitutes me? What am I made of? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to offer that advice to you and help you answer that question. Can I tell you what you're made of? Well, let's go to the word of God as we find that in the ancient texts of the scripture sharing with us that Jesus of Nazareth taught that God is spirit. God is spirit and man is God's son. We are the son of God. Jesus began to proclaim it over and over again in his teachings. Do you not know that you are God's? Do you not know that you are sons and daughters, the child of God? We use that phrase today. We may say, welcome children of God. Great to see you, child of God. We say that, but do we often reflect what that means? Wait a minute. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. This follows a logical deduction that man is also spirit because if you are the very made of the same divine substance of, from the source, the same divine substance of that heavenly parent, you are made of that very essence. You are a mere image, a reflection of the divine. You are showing exactly what that mirror reflects. That's who you are and what you're made of. As a result of being made of this substance, the same substance of, that is of God, being created in the likeness and the image that is of God, as a result of that, I'm gonna tell you this, you are capable, that's right, very capable capable of manifesting in your own body, in your thinking, in your thoughts, the very high characteristics of God. You're capable of manifesting them, capable of revealing them, capable of demonstrating them, capable of showing the very essence of God to the world around you. That's right. You are 
capable. I think we got to confess that. Say it with me. I am capable. I love that. You're capable of demonstrating everything that is of the divine source. I want to ask, why don't we teach this? Why don't we teach this to every child? Why don't we teach this in our schools? Certainly, why don't we teach this in our homes? That every child is awakened to this wonderful truth that the scriptures have unfolded for us down through the ages that we are capable because we are made of good stock. We are made, created in the likeness and image of God and all that is of the divine is at work within us. And we are the revelation of the divine. So you are amazingly gifted and divinely capable of demonstrating everything that is of this divine source, everything that is of God, everything that comes from God. It's in you, it's around you, it's working through you, and it's always for you. Why don't we teach this? Well, you know, we have a world that emphasizes our limitations and our inabilities. We often doubt one another's abilities as well. And we're thinking, you know, she thinks she can do this, but I don't think so. He thinks he is qualified, but I don't think he's got the gifts or the talents. And then we say that about ourselves. Maybe I'm not capable. We think life is hard and challenging and filled with all kinds of impossibilities. You see, it's time for us to teach a very simple lesson the divine essence is in us, and we are capable of amazing things. So with this, we must understand that 1 Timothy chapter 3.15 says, God manifest in flesh is describing you and I. Yep, this is us. God manifested in flesh. Look around. Each and every one of us is this divine expression. We look around and we see God, 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 God. God revealed each and every one of us an expression of the divine source, so capable of doing amazing things. We understand then that the scripture says in John 16, 14, all that the Father has is mine. Everything that is of God is yours. And we often overlook that passage and we just kind of dance around it without stopping to think, wait a minute. You're telling me everything that is of this infinite universe that we call God, that is everything of this infinite possibilities that we call the divine essence. You're telling me that everything that is of the miraculous, almighty, divine God that we love and cherish is ours? Yes, everything. And it's ours to claim, ours to say, I own this to claim all that, all that the Father has, it says, all, every aspect has, is ours. We can claim it, take ownership of it because of our sonship, because of our understanding of who we are as the child of God. We are each then this firstborn. When we understand that we are each the firstborn, that in ancient times meant that you were the heir. If you're the firstborn, you're the heir to all good things. And that's the message that scriptures have been trying to get across to us. You are heir. You are able then to claim, to own, to take ownership of all that is of the divine. And Romans 8, 17 says, And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Wow. God's glory. The magnificence. The excellence. All that we look to that says this is the glory of God. We are heirs to and able to claim for ourselves. But if we are to share his glory, the scripture says, we must also share in his suffering. Whoa, people look at this. So you're telling us we have to suffer? No, 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 no. Let's look at that passage and understanding that suffering is best described as the dying to the human carnal mind, our ego, our self-centeredness. Dying to that, that is the suffering it's describing of saying, I release this, I die to it. That's what it's all about. And then we are able to share in God's glory. That's right. When we let go of our ego, our self-centeredness, the thoughts of just about me, 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 we're able to share then in the understanding of the very glory of God 
that is all inclusive, that welcomes each and every one. For we are more than this limited ego, this self-centered way of thinking. So we are heirs to so, so much more. When we grasp this, we understand that the, all that the Father has is ours. So that means the wisdom of God, it's yours. That's right, the wisdom of God is yours. The creativity of the divine, uh, infinite knowledge of the universe is yours. That creativity, the infinite resources, Scripture says God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That sort of metaphor of the wealth and abundance of God, it's yours. It's yours. We can claim this. Let's just like think about that. What does that mean? Webster's Dictionary defines claim as an assertion of truth, of something typically one has disputed or in doubt. So we're going to claim what the world around us has kind of said, wait a minute, I don't know that I'm heir to all that. I don't know that I'm really made of good stock. I don't know that's really who I am. I don't know that I'm capable of all this, but we claim it and we speak the assertion of truth. We affirm it, we profess it, we hold it, we declare it, we insist. This is exactly who I am. I come from good stock. I come from wisdom. I come from creativity. I come from infinite resources. And all of this is mine to claim. I come from love. I come from the spirit of forgiveness. I come from the wonderful essence of grace. And it's mine to claim. All of this is mine. It's all within. And here's the good news. You can prove it by bringing these divine qualities into manifestation by simply demonstrating. That's right. They're already in you. They're already in you. You just have to demonstrate. You just have to say, wait a minute. I can demonstrate the wisdom of God? That's right. You can demonstrate it by simply saying, I now welcome that infinite knowledge and that, that wonderful insight that is of the divine. I welcome it, I claim it, and I begin to demonstrate it because it's mine and I'm gonna practice it. I'm gonna put it to work. So let's demonstrate, let's reveal, let's show the world what we're made of. That's right. Let's look at that for one quality that we're made of is this God's intelligence, this great infinite intelligence. You're heir to all the wisdom of the ages and the thing is, we've gotta open ourselves up to it. We've been closed to the divine inspiration of God too often where we've sort of shut down and said, well, you know, I'm just operating under my own human understanding. You know, I, I just, I'm not all that smart, you may say. I'm not, all, I'm just average. Do you know a lot of great people were just average? Do you know that? They weren't exceptional, uh, they weren't geniuses. They were just average people who were open in their lives to the unfolding of infinite wisdom, inspiration coming to them as they welcomed the spirit of God to inspire and to unfold insight and wisdom to them. It's ours to claim. So now claim it, now use it, how important it is. Because what we have to understand that God is wisdom and the son should manifest that quality. The child of God should manifest that quality. We're called to manifest the qualities of the father, the qualities of this divine source. We're called to be wise. That's right. We're called to be wise. Why? Because that's what we're made of. We're made of the wisdom, the infinite knowledge of the divine. So let's claim it and let's speak that I am filled with wisdom. I am a seeker of it and I am open to it and I'm allowing it to come into me and through me and for me and unfold in dynamic ways. Because this wisdom then is the infinite intelligence, and it is creative. That's right. It demonstrates its abilities. Here's our opportunity to show the world what you're made of. Create, manifest the miracles of this world. Show the world the glory of God. That's what we're called to do, because it's in us. It's what you're made of. So as you welcome the wisdom of God, this infinite knowledge, know that that knowledge is going to stir you to be even more creative. 
Use this wisdom of God to create. And you say, well, wait, well, I can't even think of anything to create. There isn't anything I want. Well, let me tell you this. Then start awakening the desire. Start awakening the desire. Stir it up. Begin to stir up the desire within your heart that says that I want more. You say, wait a minute. Pastor, you're saying we should desire more? Want more? Aren't we to desire less? After all, the psalmist wrote in the 23rd chapter, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I shouldn't be wanting anything, right? I, I should not want things. Well, it doesn't mean that you should not want things. It means that everything you have need of is already there and desire is already there. He's ready to lead you into still waters and green pastures. That's what the shepherd is, is in this analogy, that the divine presence of God is ready to lead you to even greater waters, still waters, clearer waters, greener pastures, places of more and more abundance because the very essence of God is expanding and ever creative. So it is. You know that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, you know? The divine source of the universe can provide for you everything for you. And the psalmist writes that, meaning that there are still waters and green pastures and the Lord prepares a table for us in the midst of our enemies and all these wonderful analogies found within that very familiar passage of the 23rd Psalm. But you know what? If you don't want it and you don't desire it, God can't give it to you. Do you understand that? God's not going to force anything on you, but is waiting for you to express the very desire that says, I want to create, I want to manifest, I want to do something. And you may say, well, I don't really need anything. It's not necessarily that you need something for yourself. How about for the world around you? How about for others? Is there a desire to manifest great things for your family, for your friends, for your neighbors, for your community, for your city, for your world? to manifest and to create for others to be the blessing that you're called to be. But here's the thing. God is ready to meet you and provide for you and make the way because that's the very essence of who and what God is. But you have to want it. You have to want it. So there's nothing wrong with having a desire for more. For more offers greater possibilities. You know? So the person who is gifted with more has greater opportunities to bless the world around. The person who is, has less and less is limited in capabilities to be that blessing. So you understand that if we're called to be a blessing, that there has to be a calling then for desire, for more within our lives, for greater things to be there. Here at City of Light, we would say, well, pastor, are we not content? Isn't it enough that we have a three-story, 36,000 square foot building? Isn't that enough? And isn't it enough that we have Emerson Theological Institute and we teach classes? Isn't that enough? And isn't it enough that we're just live streaming and trying to reach out to a few? Isn't that enough? Could we not just say that's enough? You know, isn't it enough that we're a congregation of believers who are growing, but you know, we just are content with being a community, a simple community. Isn't that enough? You see, in the desire that God placed within us, the spirit of expansion is ever there. And God meets that desire. And as you express it, the universe responds to it. And this is why we experience this great miracle I spoke about earlier. The universe providing and meeting and matching, making the way as you express. I want to create. I want to manifest. I'm going to do greater things. I'm going to touch the world in new and fresh ways. I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to be an even brighter light in the darkness than I've ever been before. You see, the universe is ready to meet that. So what we understand is the good stock you're made of is the essence of infinite wisdom that is ever desiring to be creative. And how does this creative process begin? It begins with thought. Where do we begin? It begins with our thoughts as we begin to dream some pure imagination at work. 
when we begin to imagine, when we begin to visualize, it's the essence of all that is of creation. When we read the creation story in Genesis, we find the very thought of God being expressed. Let there be light. What? And that thought manifested. That very expression is the very creative essence. Thinking substance is always there, the thinking substance. And let us understand this is how it works. Man and woman can form things in his thought. Begin to think about something. Begin to think about it. And by impressing our thought upon the formless substance, the very energy of the world around us, we can cause the things we think about to be created. There's an energy, a life force, a divine presence, an infinite wisdom, that then as we begin to think about it, we begin to think, how is this gonna happen? How is it gonna unfold? Well, you know what? Spirit begins to open up doors for us. Isn't that the way it goes? But it begins with your thought. It begins with your thought. Everything that you're experiencing today and everything within this room began with a thought. Someone thought about building this building. Someone thought about buying this building. Someone thought about the tables and chairs and designed them and created them. Someone thought about the service today. Someone thought about what the pastor is going to think about it. I think it was the pastor. He thought about it. Everything begins with a thought. And that's the very essence of all creativity. And as we begin to hold a thought in mind, it impresses upon this wonderful energy of the universe that we call spirit, that we call divine substance or formless substance. And that thought then begins to be the creative energy that we find expressed in Genesis chapter 1. The infinite intelligence of the universe that we call God said, let there be light. And the energy of the world came together, the energy of this, this formless substance. We read in Genesis 1, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, for the earth was without form and void, a formless place. But yet the thought worked within that formless substance that began to create. And so it is as we put our divine intelligence, that infinite wisdom that we're made of, that's within us to work, we begin to create. And we begin to create with these wonderful thoughts that go within our mind. God, this infinite intelligence, impresses the thought upon the formless substance and caused it to be created in the creation story. So it is that thought is the most powerful force of the universe. That's right. What you are thinking is creating your reality. And it is a powerful force in your life. You're thinking for good, it's creating good. You're thinking not so good, it's creating not so good. You see, this thought is this powerful force that impresses upon the law, the law, spiritual law. You know, we've got natural laws. We talk about this over and over again. There are natural laws. The law of gravity is a natural law. Laws of nature, right? And there are spiritual laws as well. We know that as you sow, you reap, both in nature as well as in our spiritual realm. That the spiritual law is simply a doer and it's impersonal. It's not a knower. Can I explain that to you a little bit more? It's a doer. It's waiting, waiting for you to impress upon it that which is the desire of your heart. Let me break it down a little bit more. You know, I lived in Iowa for a time, and in Iowa, in the Midwest, there's this wonderful, dark, black, rich soil, great for farming. The Midwest is a wonderful place for very fertile ground and for creating fields of abundance and great harvests. Well, the farming soil in the Midwest is that great nurturing soil, and it's simply waiting for seeds, right? That soil doesn't decide for itself and say, hmm, I've decided I'm going to grow corn. Oh, no, and I'm changing. I'm going to grow soybeans. Uh, no, no, no. How about tomatoes? Uh, well, well, I mean, I'm changing it all. It's going to be potatoes. No, the soil doesn't decide. The soil is waiting, waiting for you to plant the seed, right? And when the seed goes into this nurturing, rich soil, what happens? The soil takes over nurturing, taking care, doing what the soil is called to do. 
It nurtures, it unfolds, it causes the seed to expand and open and create a great harvest. The soil does not say, I'll grow corn. It awaits the seed and it's ready to nurture it. It's the farmer who decides the seed to plant. This is the way it works with the law. You put a thought into the law like a seed. And the law, the spiritual law of this universe will go to work but it's waiting for you to put a thought, a seed in. It's rich, it's fertile, it's ready, it's going, it's ready to say, let's, let's manifest something amazing. But what? Because it's not the knower, it's the doer. And it's waiting on you to plant this seed. For the law of sowing and reaping will happen when you put the seed in the soil and it will bring about a harvest of what? A harvest of what you planted, a harvest of that seed. So it is this divine law. Is there saying these spiritual principles are at work? What you sow, you shall reap. But if you don't sow, honey, you ain't gonna reap. It's waiting. The law is waiting. Put it to action. It's waiting. Did you put a thought in there? Did you plant a thought? Did you plant a seed? Did you think? Did you use creative wisdom? Did you use divine intelligence? What should I do for my life? What is it I want? What is it I desire? What is it I want to manifest? What is it I want to harvest? What seed should I plant? That's the choice. We're called then to use this divine inspiration within our life and impress the image through thought. Plant that seed deep within the nurturing soil and allow the law to manifest, to work in a mighty way within your life. So the question is, God has plans. God has intentions for you to prosper, but what do you want? What kind of life do you want? What kind of world do you want? What kind of revelation of God do you want to be? You see, let me tell you this. You're made of good stock. You're created in the image and likeness of God. You're capable of so much. You are capable of doing amazing things. You're capable of manifesting the miraculous. You are capable of creating, inventing, creating and manifesting all kinds of amazing, wonderful things in the world. But it begins when you plant the seed, when you express the thought. So it all goes back to us understanding, what are we made of? Is it time you begin to live the life you've come to live? You've come to live a life that's abundant, Scripture says. Abundant, full, full of experiences, full of wonderful encounters, full of love and grace, full of forgiveness, full of all kinds of stuff. Abundance, full. Isn't it time to live that life? Well, it's available when you understand what you're made of. You've come to be a revelation of God, the child, the heir to all, revealing it to the world. Now, for some of you, who may not be into the music scene of the past 20 years, but some others may recall the Backstreet Boys. Do you remember them? Okay. Backstreet Boys sang a song a few years back, and the words were, when walls start to close in, your heart is frozen over, just show them what you're made of. When sunlight is fading, the world will be waiting for you, just show them what you're made of. And in the midst of this pandemic, that song is singing to each and every one of us. Because in the midst of this pandemic, the world is saying, show us. Show us what you're made of. Show us that divine essence that's within you. Go and demonstrate your talents, your fortitude, your ability, your courage, and your worth. For the world around us may be saying, you don't stand a chance in this man." But match, but you go out there and you prove them wrong. You show the world what you're made of. You're made of good stock. You're full of the divine essence. You're full of the wisdom, the power of creativity that's waiting for you to express desire in thought. Show us what you're made of. That's the call for the world today. Look and examine, what am I made of? Well, let me reveal it now to the world. I'm going to show the world what I'm made of. Would you say that with me? I'm going to show the world what I'm made of.
Amen. God bless you. Thank you.